In this video, you will be receiving directions for how to set up your writer's notebook for the way we need it for Tangerine. The supplies that you'll need are your writer's notebook and a pencil. Recently in class, we gave you a paper clip and we told you to mark the back half of your writer's notebook and that we were going to use that for our class novel. Go ahead and find that section in the back where you have the paper clip. The first page should probably be, or one of the pages will be, the notes on indirect characterization that you colored and cut out and that we took yesterday in class and that you made the flaps. So find another set of pages. You need probably about five or six pages together, so, it, so just find a section of pages in the back that will work. The first thing that I would like you to do is to make sure that you have the spirals of your notebook on the left side. So as you can see, you'll need to arrange your notebook so that it looks like this. And then I would like you to start at the top of your notebook. It's usually called the margin up there. It's this section up here at the top where there are no lines. And you can just make the line going straight across, as you can see here. And you can just do that with your pencil. Just make a line straight across. Feel free to pause the video anytime you need to do some writing or anything else in your writer's notebook. Then there should be in your writer's notebook a pink line along the left side by the spirals. What you can do there is you can make a line with your pencil going straight down so that you'll have a very, a pretty skinny column right here in this section. It will include the holes as you can see. Um, so this will be a small section, not very large. You won't need to write anything big there, so this will be the perfect width. As you should be able to see, you will need one more line and look. take a look at what you have left over. So you've kind of got this space left over and you can just split it in half with a line down the middle. So that as you can see, you've got two sections right here that are rather large. They're much larger than this section over here. You will need to write um, quite a bit in these sections, so you want them larger. Once you have that ready to go, wait for directions on what to label these sections. Feel free to pause the video so you can set your notebook up so that it looks exactly like this. All right, now that you have your notebook set up with the correct lines, let's go ahead and take a look at how you will label each section. In the first section, I would like you to label that page number. As you can see, I've got it in the margin above that line that you drew on the top. Just page number would be great. When you look at your whole notebook, it should look like this. It is in the column all the way to the left by the spirals and it says page number. You can pause the video right now and write that if you'd like. In the next column, you, the middle column, you will label this character and the choice he slash she made. So copy exactly what Mrs. Messner has written into the next column. And you'll know that you're in the correct column because it is just to the right of the page number column that you already labeled. You can go ahead and pause the video while you write those words. And in the final column, you will write these words the impact or effect that the choice had on Paul. And you can see that this is the last column, this is the column all the way on the right, and it's right next to the column that you just wrote. Go ahead and pause the video if you need to write those words. When you are completely finished setting up your notebook, this is what it should look like. Make sure that yours looks exactly like this because it will become very, very important to you. Let's go ahead now and talk about what we are going to be looking for on these pages. All right, so what we are going to be looking for is throughout the reading of our novel, we are going to be looking for choices that different characters make in the novel and how they affect or impact Paul. Paul is our main character, so we are focusing on him because as you go throughout this novel and read it, you will notice that people all around Paul are constantly making choices that have a major impact or effect on him. 
Uh, sometimes he's making his own choices, but very often there are other characters in the story that make these choices, and perhaps they don't mean to affect Paul, but in some way they affect Paul. And this could be positively or negatively. There are some characters in the story that make choices that hurt Paul, but there are also characters in the story that are making positive choices, and they affect Paul in a good way. So let me give you an example of one so that we can get started and so that you can know what we're looking for. All right, the first one that we found was on pages one and two. It started on page one and then continued on to page two. So this is the choice that we're talking about. Uh, we are looking at Paul's parents' decision to move to Florida. So Paul wasn't really involved in this choice. His parents made this choice. Um, typically, a child can't make the choice to move the entire family. So Paul's parents decided to move to Florida. Please pause the video while you copy everything in this column and this column into your writer's notebook. Now, one thing that I just want to point out is that yesterday, when we were talking about the notes for indirect characterization, um, we had everything in our notes in quotation marks. And I just want to point out that this is a column for text evidence, but I'm not looking for a quote from the text. So I do not need... I do not need to use quotation marks here because, in fact, I put the text evidence into my own words. The book never said that Paul's parents decided to move to Florida. That was just something that I knew because I read the book. So this column will be text evidence, but it will always be in your own words. You will not need to use quotation marks because we don't want you to quote the text. So really, when you find a choice that someone makes in the story that affects Paul, just put it in your own words, okay? You can just paraphrase it. Um, in addition, you have to make sure that in some way you can figure out how this will affect Paul. If the choice that a character makes doesn't affect Paul, then it will not go in your notebook. All right, the next thing I'll show you is the impact that this has on Paul. So how would you feel if your parents decided to move you to another state and a new school? Well, we can infer, and this is all an inference, that it would probably make a person feel anxious. We're just inferring that this move, this big change for Paul, could make him anxious. So this column will always be an inference. You will always have to decide for yourself how this is going to affect Paul. You can go ahead and pause the video while you copy this down in your writer's notebook. All right, let's continue on, and I want to give you another example. But first I want to show you how Mrs. Messner skipped a line. So skip a line so that you can have plenty of room for your next example. And notice, I'll, I'll kind of highlight it for you. This is the line that she skipped right here. So you want to try and keep your notebook really, really neat. Uh, that will help you in the future just to find things easily. If it's messy, it'll be a disaster trying to find something. The next example that we found was on page four. So you can go ahead and take a second, and you can write that down in your own writer's notebook. And I will show you the example that we found. Remember, it's going to be, it's not going to be a quote from the text. It's going to be paraphrased. Uh, on page four, we found that Paul's parents ignored Paul's accusation about Eric trying to kill him. They just flat out um, said, you know, Paul, that's not really what happened. You can't see well. So we put it into our own words that they just ignored him. Go ahead and pause the video while you copy that down. And then you need to start thinking to yourself, how does this impact Paul? So Paul's parents just ignoring what he said about his brother, what effect will that have on Paul? Well, Mrs. Messer and I were able to infer that this would probably make a person feel angry and ignored. So as you can see in this column right now over here, we have 
things about Paul's feelings. How is he feeling? It won't always be about his feelings, but very often it's going to be, how does this decision make Paul feel? How would this make anyone feel? So you can kind of maybe try and put yourself in the character's place and, you know, really decide how would this make you feel? Now, this is all an inference, remember. So this doesn't, this we don't know for sure if this made Paul feel angry and ignored. We can only infer that if this had maybe happened to us or maybe had happened to a person, they would start to feel angry and ignored. Hopefully you kind of have a good idea of what we are looking for and what we're going for in this journal now. And you can start to begin to find your own examples of choices that characters made and how Paul felt about them or how they impacted Paul. Mrs. Messer and I will continue to give you guidance about where to find these so that you're not just on your own. One last thing I'd like to show you before this video closes out is I just want to show you what your writer's notebook should look like right now, everything that you should have. And then I'd like to show you one other thing that might help keep you organized. So in the past, when Mrs. Messer and I have skipped lines, we have also kind of made, drawn a line in between here so that we have our answers in nice little neat boxes. If that's something that you think would work for you, please feel free to do that or try any other thing that would help keep you organized. But I do want to show you that when Mrs. Messner made these and wrote these, she tried to write them very neatly, but in addition, she also, um, you know, she puts this side over here, she puts it directly across from this first thing that she does. So I think that's a nice way to keep yourself organized. It wasn't like she wrote this all the way down here and it was trying to match up. It didn't get sloppy. So that's just a suggestion that I'd like to give you. One last suggestion is that you might have noticed that we have included some arrows right here because we're just kind of showing like the cause and effect type of relationship is because, because this happened over here, now this is how Paul feels. So if you'd like to include the arrows, you can. They're optional. You don't have to. But if, you, if that really helps um, organize it in your mind, that sounds great. Please just make sure that your notebook looks exactly like this. And thank you so much for paying attention and setting up your notebook in this way. Have a great day.